Hello and welcome to another edition of Uncle Cthulhu Reviews. Today I've got my hands on Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition rule book core, core book. So what I thought I'd do today is talk a wee bit about the Vampire the Masquerade games and have a look through the books. Now I've been involved with the Vampire the Masquerade all the way from 1st edition. Certainly 1st, 2nd and 3rd edition had the rules um, and pretty much everything that was ever published for it as well as the other World of Darkness um, uh, worlds as well like Werewolf and Mage and I did a lot of live role playing back in the day with the Camarilla UK became Islands of Darkness and then Requiem happened so I think the Count Requiem as the fourth edition uh, well, no, actually, there, there was a there was another Onks Path published version, I think, of Vampire as well, so that might be what the count was, 4th edition. Uh, Requiem was pretty interesting. I think uh, Requiem was a pretty solid system, but it didn't have the world overview that the World of Darkness has. Like I said in my other video as well, I've just gotten over the cold, so I might need to cough, or if I'm um, sounding a bit snotty, that's because I've just gotten over the cold. That's why I haven't really done any videos for the last few days few times <coughs> excuse me so vampire the masquerade so what it is is it's a role playing game where you're going to play a vampire and the vampires are struggling certainly in the previous sentence to uh, keep a grasp on their humanity so the more bestial things they do the more humanity they'll lose till eventually they become beasts and you lose your character now, vampires still have to eat, uh, drink blood, and they've got a lot of the traditional vampire flaws. Um, so that's one of the things that means that they spiral down and, and lose their hum humanity. Now, vampire was massive in the 90s. It hit the zeitgeist in the 90s. Certainly this afternoon while I've been modelling, I've been listening to Killing Joke, Pandemonium album to get back into the uh, vampire mood, which pretty much soundtrack of my 90s killing joke sisters of mercy etc and uh yeah it vampire was massively popular in the 90s certainly going into the millennium and then the zeitgeist seemed to have moved in role playing and uh we now seem to be on a big dungeons and dragons up so so looking at the book let's see what's going on So, open up, looks like some sort of, I don't know what these are. It's like pages, dedications. Wilder Darkness always had some interesting background story to begin with. Let's just keep up with this. So, straight away. It looks like a really souped up version of what you would get in the traditional rules. This is my first time looking at the book in any sort of detail. Now, from reading the blurb, I think the Gehenna events happened and the vampires are starting to pull together post the Gehenna event again. So, tons of stuff here. So yeah, this is looks like it's going to be a full colour book. The art's very atmospheric. Um, one of my things I didn't like about the Requiem setting was the text looked very dense. It was very difficult to word through. This actually looks like it'll be quite easy to read. Oh there, yeah, this is a beautiful looking book. Nice clean. Sort of modern art which um, mixes photos with artwork. So we're still in the background section now and we're up to so up to 63 pages and now we're talking about the clans. So in Vampire you, you, you play a member of a clan. Every vampire's got a um, uh, different bloodline and they've got different 
ability. So start off with the Bruja. Bruja are, are fighters generally, and they um, tend to be rebels and rail against the man. Certainly, there was a whole load of um, negative publicity about this book, about some of the concepts that they decided to input in, and uh, claiming the authors had an outright agenda. But I read the the stuff on that, and I thought it was a bit of a nonsense. Gangrel are um, ship changers, bestial vampires, turn into wolves and bats. Malkavian are all, there's a madness in the clan of the Malkavians. So to the additional Malkavian tropes might be that kooky vampire. So I'm wondering if they have updated the um, weak clan weaknesses. Nosferatu, one of my favourite vampires clans, and these are the these are the, um, the, the kind of ugly sewer dwelling uh, Nosferatu's. Uh, they hide a lot. Um, soft animals got strength. Toyodor, the artists. Like I say this. I hope you're enjoying the artwork as much as me. I'll, I'll be looking forward to sitting down with this. Tremia are the occultists and magic users, usurpers and warlocks. So these clans here all form the Camarilla, which are probably the best, the most humane organization of vampires. And they maintain the Masquerade, which try and hides vampires from mortals. And finally, Clan Venture, the aristocracy of the vampire world, the Blue Bloods. Ketif, Ketif are clanless. Ketif can't really call a clan. The Thin Blooded. So, yeah, these were sort of start coming in in third edition which were the sort of 13th, 14th to 15th generations where their, their blood's quite thin in terms of vampiric potency. So I'm wondering if we're going to come up to the Sabat clan. No, we've gone into the rules. So this book must just have the seven basic clans in it. There are <clears throat> several independent clans, the, the Giovanni, the Asamites, the Setites and the Ravnos. And then there are two Sabat clans, the Sombra and the Zemitsi, uh, are the main clans. So, rules. There'll be tons of rules. I'm not a massive rule fan, so... <coughs> and the character, character creation. Coterie creation, that was quite interesting. So coteries are basically your player group. They're your vampires who've allied together for various reasons um, to support each other. So the other thing about vampire is you're not. It's not about preying on humans necessarily. The game, but it's about struggling with the beast within and politicking and intriguing against other vampires in an eternal game. The older vampires certainly use. The younger vampires uh, to do their bidding so you might get an elder vampire giving you missions um, and that mission might be to go and embarrass a rival so this is a section on vampires himself um, and actually how that translates into mechanics which is really nice <coughs> she's me hunger feeding so this is Gifts of the Blood, so I'm just starting to flick ahead now. States of Damnation, the Blood Bond, the ways the vampires control each other. Humanity. So I say I'm not sure if I have time in my life again to do much in the vampire role playing, but vampire disciplines are the powers of the vampires, the the actual um abilities that they get for being a vampire, for example, heightened speed, awareness, uh, the ability to change a form, and resist damage. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'll have time to do any role-playing for this, but 
Vampire was a massive part of my life. Uh, and seeing there was a fifth edition coming out, I thought, what the heck? Let's have a look, see what's done, what's changed. Um, certainly, I do have time in my life to do a lot more gaming at the moment. I'm doing my regular bot action games, Game of Thrones, uh, Warhammer games as well. So, never say never. Certainly, I don't, I don't think I'll ever be... Um, I'll ever be going back to live action as just too much out of game politics. It, it totally puts me off. So yeah, advanced systems, advanced rules. Like I said, I'm just flicking through now to see if the other clans will get a mention. Cities, create new own cities, create new own chronicles. I know certainly there is a Camarilla book coming out and uh, Anak book who are the vampires are real against the Camarilla. 